Hello and welcome to another review. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Collecte Deluxe Thalassomadon and 140 scale human, the most important part, obviously. Um, this isn't even the human that came with it, I don't think, I'm not really sure. Um, but it's one of them, it's a human. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> this was an interesting figure to pick up. Uh, it came out back in 2016 and I've finally gotten around to actually purchasing it. And I'm excited to finally have it in the collection because this was actually my first long neck plesiosaur model that was not like a mini or just a cheap chinosaur or anything like that. My first proper figure of a long neck plesiosaur. I have a couple pliosaurs, a couple mosasaurs, I have plenty of ichthyosaurs, um, but this was the only plesiosaur that I had until I got another one relatively recently. We'll get to that one later, but uh, yeah, anyhow, so uh, very nice to finally have uh, a plesiosaur figure, and not only is it a plesiosaur, but it's an elasmosaur, so it has one of the longest necks, even by, you know, plesiosaur standards, so, yeah. Uh, not only is this figure, you know, uh, notable because it's an elasmosaur and because it's a thalassomadon, it's also a notably good representation of thalassomadon, I would say. I'm not particularly an expert on marine reptiles, as you all probably know, uh, nor am I an expert on plesiosaurs specifically, but from the little bit of research that I conducted for this review, uh, I can say that this thing looks pretty darn well put together just in terms of proportions and overall skeletal anatomy and musculature and all that. It, it looks really good. There could be things wrong with it, I don't really know, but uh, the proportions and the overall body shape all the way down to the little head and the dentition and such, just every, everything stood out as being uh, really close to the just the actual animal brought to life based on what I could see. So, uh, yeah, and just from a visual standpoint as well, like, this is such an appealing design. It's it's pretty simple and smooth, but it just looks so, like, fast and aqua dynamic. It just looks like this graceful, speedy thing just cruising through the water. Uh, despite having, you know, this big, ungainly neck and everything, they really made it look like a, a powerful, uh, fast predator. And uh, it's great. It's great. It just, it just looks nice. It just looks satisfying. Uh, the colors are really nice, too. The paintwork is... It's interesting, it's very collecta-y because it's sort of simple and has lots of patterns and things happening, but I think it really works well. Um, the colors actually remind me a lot of uh, a couple of the color schemes coming up for some 2020 collected figures. I say coming up, but I think they might both already be out. At least one of them is. Uh, the Fukisaurus and the Lissawikia are the models that I'm referring to. They also have this sort of uh, chocolate chip cookie motif going on uh, in with various sort of, you know, uh, distinctions between them, variations, depending on the specific model. And uh, this one, it looks great. It, it doesn't just have, like, big, you know, chocolate chip spots. It actually has lots of little speckles and kind of freckles and things, and I think it looks really nice. It kind of reminds me of the old Walking with Dinosaurs Crypticolitis design. There's just something really visually appealing about it to me, and uh, just seeing how it extends down the neck and everything and onto the tail. Yeah, I just, I really like it. Just this kind of desaturated beige with the darker brown sort of speckles and spots. It's, it's very nice. It's very simple, but very nice. Uh, there is also a little fluke. I don't really know what the science behind the fluke is, like how accurate that is necessarily, but I think it's probably a perfectly plausible speculation. Um, in terms of detail, like sculpted detail, there's not much to speak of. The skin is pretty smooth for the most part, but I think it works. There's just a little bit of kind of, you know, vague texture, vague little lines and things. And then in certain areas you see, you know, a bit more obvious texturing work, like these larger wrinkles and folds of skin around, like, the base of the fins and such. And there's some larger, like, depressions and areas of, like, saggy skin and things on the belly and underside, and some little areas where you can kind of see muscles bulging out. It's very subtle, but I think it really looks good. A highlight of this figure for me anyway is the head. Um, the head is so small. It's like the size of a thumb... No, it's smaller than my thumbnail. It's like a pinky nail. And um, for for its size, it's it's really well done. When I was looking at promotional images for this and even some in-hand in -hand images, I was actually really worried about the head. I thought that it had the potential to be kind of poor looking in person because it was so small I was expecting the teeth not to look very good but they look great it's all very crisp well sculpted well painted there's even some detail inside the mouth um so yeah any doubt I had about that was uh, was put to rest and that's awesome so that is about it I'm going to be giving this one a 9 out of 10 uh, here are a few size comparisons. We have the old Papuallosaurus, a standard of the channel. We have my only other collecte marine reptile, the birthing uh, 
Temnodontosaurus, excuse me, that was like a stifled burp hiccup or something. And then <laughs> a little human again. So uh, that's about it, and I will see you all next time. And in fact, that's not the outro. I will see you all on the flip, right? We're still flipping things, I think. I don't know. <laughs>